Alright, thanks for watching. And today we're gonna do something absolutely beautiful. Because so far we learned about eigenvalues and eigenvectors, which are just those weird algebraic things that you can calculate explicitly. But the question is, what do those eigenvalues and eigenvectors tell us geometrically? And it turns out they tell us a lot. It's kind of like a treasure of linear algebra. Because using eigenvalues and eigenvectors, I can tell you precisely what a linear transformation does. And this is really the true essence of linear algebra. It's not really linear algebra, because I hate algebra, but I like math. So by contradiction, it cannot be algebraic. But it's really not linear algebra, but linear geometry. Because the idea is, how can we use those algebraic tools, like eigenvalues and eigenvectors, to say something geometrically? All right, and let me give you a concrete example. So define the following linear transformations from R2 to R2. Simply, let me just double check, yeah, by T of XY, it's just, x plus y and 4x plus y. Now, and the question is, what is t? What does it do geometrically? And um, um, because so far, all we know is the following. We know that if you do it in R2, it takes one point in R2 as its input and spits out a possibly different point in R2. This is what T does, but the idea is, well, that doesn't really tell us much. We want to say, what is T? And it turns out, again, with eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we can do that. Because notice, you can write T in the following form. That's 1141 times XY. And in particular, what is T? It's just multiplication by this matrix. So... In other words, that's A times XY, and you know, A is this matrix. So how about we find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A? And I have done another video on how to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a two by two matrix. So I'm not gonna do that now because I wanna keep it as short as possible. But let me tell you what the eigenvalues are. So it turns out the eigenvalues are lambda is minus one and three. And the eigenvectors are as follows. For lambda equals minus one, it's simply any multiple of, let's say, the vector 1 minus 2. And for lambda equals 3, it's any multiple of 1, 2. And in fact, you can check it. For example, for 1 minus 2, 1, 1, 4, 1 of 1 minus 2. Well, that becomes 1 minus 2, which is minus 1, 4 minus 2, which is 2. And minus 1, 2, it's precisely minus 1 times 1 minus 2. So, therefore, 1 minus 2 is an eigenvector corresponding with an eigenvalue. Because eigenvalue is this lambda here, eigenvector is just a vector v, such that av equals lambda v. We'll need that characterization in a second. And similarly, what happens when you do it at 1, 2? So 1, 1, 4, 1 at 1, 2. That is, so 1 plus 2, which is 3. Hopefully we can agree on that. 4 plus 2, which is 6. So if you apply A to 1, 2, you get 3, 6. And that's 3 times 1, 2. All right. And the question is, again, those are things you can calculate algebraically. The question is, what does that tell us geometrically? Well, here's what it tells us. It tells us the following. Because we have two eigenvectors, it turns out they're linearly independent, and it turns out they form a basis. So fact, if you put both of them together, 
1 minus 2 and 1, 2 is a basis of R2. And in future videos, which I may already have posted actually, um, I will show you why this is true. Why, if you put two different eigenvectors together, they're at least linearly independent, and why in some cases you get a basis. So from now, just take it for granted. And what does that tell you really? Because you have a basis, and at least in R2, you should think of bases as two axes. So what is this telling you is that R2 has two axes. One that is sort of spanned by one minus two, let's call this x prime. So if one, this is zero, and this is the vector one minus two. So you have one axis that is directed or spanned by one minus two, the x prime axis, and some other axis which is spanned or directed by one, two. Y prime, which is one, two. And so it's not our standard x and y axis, but kind of tilted axes. And uh, using those axes, we can tell you what A does. Because look, what does A do on the x prime axis? So for example, what does A do at 1 minus 2? Well, it gives you minus 1 times 2. In other words, if you take A on this axis, I mean, if you take a vector, let's say 1 minus 2 on this axis and you apply A to it, it just flips it around the origin. You get minus 1, 2. And in fact, this is true for any vector on the x prime axis, because if you take any multiple of 1 minus 2, this C comes out and you get C times A times 1 minus 2, which is C times minus 1 times 2, sorry, uh, yeah, which becomes minus c times 1, 2, so minus that vector. So in other words, any vector on the x prime axis, a flips it, and by definition also t does that. And what about 1, 2? Well, notice, if you apply a to the vector 1, 2, it just scales it by a factor of 3. That is 3, 6, and that's 3 times 1, 2. So if you take the vector here, 1, 2, it's still on this axis, and we get 3, 6. So any vector on this axis, it just dilates it by a factor of 3. And similarly here, if you take a vector here, it dilates it, but in this direction. All right, now you might say, what about other vectors? Because we only know what happens on the x prime axis and the y prime axis. Well, for other vectors, it turns out A or T just does kind of a combination of the two. So literally a linear combination. For example, let's figure out what happens for the vector 5, 2. Now, it's very important, this is a basis which means you can write 5, 2 in terms of the, uh, those basis vectors. And I believe it's something like 2 times 1, 2, 1 minus 2, plus 3 times 1, 2. Because indeed, 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 1 is, so 2 times 1 is 2, 3 times 1 is 3. If you add them, you get 5, and then minus 4 plus 6. That is 2. So what does that look like in this picture? It's probably something, the same coordinates here, but maybe somewhere here. Five, two. So this is five, two, and let's see what A does to this. So A of five, two, and again, by the way, what does that mean? It means that sort of the components here, this component is two times this component, and maybe they exaggerate this component is like three times the one comma two component. Even though my picture isn't quite optimal. But anyway, so what does it mean? So A applies five two, 
So that's a times two times one minus two plus three times one two. And that's really because a is linear, so it's two times a of one minus two plus three times a of one two. And that's two times minus one times one minus two plus three times three times one two. Now, notice what this is saying. It says that the vector 5, 2 has two components. One is the x prime component. The other one is the y prime component. And what does A do? Well, it takes the x prime component. Or maybe let me write it this way. It's minus 1 times 2 times 1 minus 2. It takes the x prime component and flips it by a factor of minus one, so it flips it around this axis. So the new component becomes something here. And the y component, well, it's three times three times one, two. And it takes the y component and scales it by a factor of three. So this component here then just becomes here, somewhere right here. And then what is this saying is, well, it takes this component and scales it here, this component and scales it here. So the output, it's probably a sum of the two. Then what do we get? Well, <laughs> I have to redraw this picture a little bit to really explain what happens. Uh, so again, just to recap, what does A do here? So it, the vector 5, 2, it has two components. One in the x prime axis, the other one in the y prime axis. Here, what this equation is saying is you go two steps in this direction and three steps in this direction to get 5, 2. Now, what does A do? It takes the first component, so let's say 2, comma, one, uh, 2 times 1 minus 2, and just flips it. So it takes this component and flips it. And it takes this component, so 3 times 1, 2, and stretches it by a factor of 3 to get this point here. And then essentially what you do, you just add those two components again, and you get a new vector, which looks something like that. Da, 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 da. This and this, probably somewhere here. So this vector... Well, it's not as big in the, this direction as this vector, but it's sort of in between this 5, 2, which explains the 7 here. And what about the y prime component? Well, it's huge. So that's why 20 actually makes sense. So in other words, a takes the vector 5, 2, and basically, it flips the x prime component and stretches the y prime component. In other words, um, geometrically, and remember our question is to figure out what happens geometrically to our linear transformations. Well, what A is or what T is, it's simply just a combination of stretching and flipping. So in this case, whenever you have a negative eigenvalue, if it's minus 1, then it flips. If it's minus 2, it flips and stretches this component. And, and if it's like 3, it stretches it this way. And same for the other axis. So if you want to, to summarize, at least for diagonalizable linear transformations, there are two axes which is, in this case, the x prime axis and the y prime axis. And on each, each axis, the linear transformation does something simple, just stretching or flipping by a certain number. And in general, for any other vector, it just does a hybrid of the two. So in other words, a complete... Um, a description of what a linear transformation does, at least in the diagonalizable case, but it turns out in the general case is very similar. So, for example, let's take a non-diagonalizable matrix. 
1101. What this tells us, in this case, I guess the generalized eigenvectors, if you know what that means, are 1, 0, and 0, 1. And on 1, 0, A does nothing. So A of 1, 1, 0, 1, you can check it's just 1, 0. On the other uh, axis, let's say here, A takes 0, 1 and puts it to 1, 1. And essentially what A is, is just a shearing transformation. So even in the non-diagonalizable case, if there's no I, at least a eigenvalue, then A does the same thing, but maybe you include some shearing. And lastly, if there's no eigenvalue in the real case, it usually means there's a complex eigenvalue, and complex eigenvalues just correspond to rotation. So the typical rotation matrix, 0, 1, minus 1, 0, that has eigenvalue plus or minus i, and that just corresponds to rotating by a certain number. So again, what happens here, there's some sort of a complex axis, more or less, and um, your linear transformation, all it does, it rotates and maybe stretches and flips. In other words, linear transformations are just like that, just stretching, flipping, rotating, you know, bite, use it, break it, fix it, <laughs> you know, like Daft Punk. But, um, all right, I hope you like this geometric characterization of linear transformations. If you want to see more math, please make sure to watch my channel and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.